Hound Puppy is here with a game featuring a dog, and that game is Scrapyard Dog for your Atari 7800, featuring some middle school artwork that has a dog that's obviously mutated and nearly as tall as his owner, and his owner is obviously very allergic to him, judging by his nose. How fun! Let's go ahead and take Scrapyard Dog, pop it in my Atari 7800 Pro system, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Arf! Scrapyard Dog was published by Atari and carries a copyright year of 1990, coming out the same year as Super Mario 3 on the NES. A year later, Scrapyard Dog was released for the Atari Lynx. It was made by Blue Sky Software, who also made the groundbreaking Ninja Golf, which I reviewed way back in episode 50. According to the manual, Kidnapped Canine, Louie, the junkyard guy, was just settling down for his regular Sunday afternoon lunch. A foot-long head cheese sandwich with tons of mustard, six garlic pickles, a two-pound bag of potato chips, and a diet soft drink. The diet soft drink was because Louie was watching his weight, because nobody likes a fat junkyard guy. The phone rang, and Louie picked it up, even though his mouth was full. He listened for a few moments, and then sprayed crumbs of bread and head cheese all over the office. A dastardly dog napper gang kidnapped his best pal Scraps, the infamous Scrapyard Dog. If Louie doesn't hand over the deed to the junkyard, Scraps is dog gone. Louis played along and told the kidnappers he would bring the deed to the first checkpoint to receive further instructions, but it's un-American to knuckle under to kidnappers and terrorists, and Louis won't do that. He's going to go to the checkpoint and find the location of the gang's headquarters, then he's going to rescue Scraps and rid the town of the puppy purloiners. Scrapyard Dog is for one player only and only has one standard mode of difficulty. It is a platformer that seems to want to be the Atari 7800's answer to Super Mario Bros. on the NES. The game contains 17 levels divided into 6 worlds. The first five worlds are split into three levels, with the first level always being a junkyard level, the second level always taking place on the city streets, and the third level always being in the sewers, which are sadly lacking mutant turtles who happen to be teenage ninjas. During the game, you use a joystick to move Louie, the left button to jump, and the right button to throw a can, and down in the right button to throw a special weapon. You can also do a long jump by getting a running start holding down right before jumping. At the end of most levels is a ringing phone. Pressing up on the phone answers it, ending the level as the voice on the other end tells you where to go. You will also hear the phone ringing if your timer is almost up. If your timer runs out, you lose a life. On junkyard levels are dumpsters you can go in. Most have shops, but you can also find a bonus piano room. You can press up on the P to hear a tune. If you can play the tune without making too many mistakes by jumping on the keys, you get a bonus. The less mistakes made, the better the bonus. During the city levels, you can knock on doors by pressing up. If you wait long enough, some doors will open. Inside, you will either find a shop or a room where bonuses will show up, but quickly disappear as well. On the sewer levels, you can press up on some pipes to take you to different pipes, which may take you to an area with a bonus or to a different part of the level, sometimes an area closer to the end and sometimes not. Throughout the levels, you can defeat enemies by either throwing cans or bombs at them or jumping on them. Jumping on them can reveal items to pick up, like an extra can or money. There are also obstacles, like tires and basketballs, that you cannot defeat by jumping on them, but you can jump on them to avoid them or throw a bomb to destroy them. In the shops, depending on the shop, you can either exchange cans for cash, buy super cans that home in on enemies, bombs that destroy everything on the screen, extra time on the timer, extra lives, or shields that let you take an extra hit. But if you fall in the sludge in the sewer, you lose any extra shields along with a life. During the game, you can uncover bonuses, including $1 money bags, $10 money bags, cans, clocks that add time, and hearts that give you an extra life. For each life, you start with a shield allowing you to take one hit without dying. If you lose your shield, it remains lost during that life, even if you pass a level. If you lose all your lives, the game allows you to continue a limited number of times. But when you continue, you start on the junkyard level of that world. There are no bosses in the game, but if you reach the end of the game, you have to do a sliding puzzle to reveal the identity of the dog napper before a buzzsaw gets your dog. Yes, the final boss of a platformer is a sliding puzzle. Next time, I'll need to find a racer where the final race turns into a one-on-one -on -one fighter. 
Scoring wise, you get 25 points for collecting cans, clocks, or money bags, 200 points for defeating gangsters, 100 points for defeating mice or rats, 500 points for defeating birds or destroying tires, hydrants, or basketballs with the bombs, and 50 points for each second remaining on the timer when you complete a level. Graphically speaking, the game looks pretty good overall, although it does get tiring seeing the same three types of levels over and over, and personally, I find Louie to be an unappealing character to play. Sound and music wise, I thought the game had a nice playful soundtrack and some good sounds, including one of the best phone ringing sounds I've ever heard in the game. Family friendly wise, the game is fairly tame, and I'm guessing that they don't show the buzzsaw hitting the dog if you take too long at the end, but my skills weren't good enough to get that far. Overall, I think the game would get an E for everyone rating if released today. At the time I researched on eBay, including shipping, loose copies were going for about $36 to $37, and one complete copy sold for $35. So what did I think of Scrapyard Dog? Well, it's a bit of a mixed bag. On the bright side, it controls okay, it has some good graphics and music, and I thought the piano bonus rooms were pretty creative. But the game is pretty hard really early on. There is simply too much coming at you most of the time, and having to navigate the sewers is a massive challenge as well. Perhaps for the final sewer level this would have been justifiable, but doing it for every sewer level is just too much. I'm glad you get some continues, but the levels feel so long that having to go all the way back to the junkyard after you reach a sewer was pretty deflating. This is a game that could have really benefited from an easier difficulty option, continues that pick up on your last level, or even a password given to you after you complete a world. Personally, I was only able to get to the sixth level, and while I had some fun with the game, the idea of trying to get further in the game sounds more tedious than fun at this point. So where am I going to rank Scrapyard Dog? Somewhere in the bottom half. I do like it better than Summer Games at 40, but I'd rather play Pole Position 2 at 39. So out of the 56 games I've now ranked on the 7800, Scrapyard Dog is digging into the 40 position. Scrapyard Dog brings some much needed platforming action to the 7800, but it's really tough and it's no Super Mario. So what do you think of the game? Whether you agree or disagree with me, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also feel free to click the like and subscribe buttons and follow me both on the Facebook or the Twitter. I'm also a member of the Retro Junkies Network. At this time, I'd like to thank the extraordinary James, Kim, and Adam, who recently signed up to support the show through Patreon. Thank you all. It really does encourage me to continue making videos. If you appreciate the work I do, please consider joining the League of Extraordinary Patreon Supporters by signing up at patreon.com slash nosweargamer for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time in the next episode of the Noswear Gamer. Take care and watch your dogs.